Okay. Okay, let's do this thing. I hate the fact that I'm medium fat. Like, fine mm-hmm. just don't sit down especially the button downs because then all of a sudden like it'll create that little oval yeah in between hate it sucks <laughs> gross lose some weight fucker is what i say to myself oh yeah hello everybody welcome to another episode of the f word podcast i'm your host g and with me is just vast this time what's up we were on a roll for a while with anthony and so the trio was rolling heavy and then last week we took off because yeah. I had that deep dive. Right, right, right. And then Anthony now has to work tonight. But for all of you listening, it's the weekend. So I hope you're having a really good weekend. Or if you're listening during the week, that's cool too. I've also noticed that like we get some listeners right off the bat. And then I'll look on like Wednesday or Thursday. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden there's like more people listening towards the end of the week. Like leading into like Friday, for instance. Mm-hmm. We'll have more listeners, and then Saturday we'll kickstart it kind of over again. So it's like sporadic. So really, I can't pinpoint when you're listening to this, but whenever you're listening to this and wherever you are, just know that I care about you, that we care about you. And um, also, SAS Podcast Network and Connexus Credit Union. Um, I kind of said that like a dick. A little bit. Yeah, Whatever. nothing wrong with the SAS Podcast Network. That's kind of cool to be a part of it. We had that meeting that we talked about last time and stuff, but mm-hmm. the whole like Connexus thing now, and it's just like after a while, like we talked about this last time. You get it. Um, yeah, life updates. I have a new job. Vass has a new job, so yeah. we're we're now starting to get our lives together once again for the 18th time. I feel like everybody that asks me, I'm like, you know what? By the time I'm 40, which mm-hmm. will be nine years from now, I'll have my life figured out, hopefully. Because there's an old Carl Jung quote that says something. I think it's along the lines of um, life starts at 40. Yeah. And everything before that is just practice. So sweet for all you Carl Jung fans <laughs> or all you people that are in your 30s and not sure what the fuck is going on. Don't worry. 40 is going to, re- is going to be when it really kicks off. Um, lots of stuff because we had last week off. There wasn't a lot of news. No, I hope you had a chance to listen to my deep dive episode I did on Frank D'Angelo, who is a very weird individual. It's this Canadian guy who has James Caan and has interviewed in his movies. Sorry, in his B movies, by the way. Um, and he's got like Al Pacino as a friend, kind of who's been on his show. He's got like a radio show or whatever, and. uh yeah, it was really interesting. So I did it with the Goatsy guys, who are two gentlemen, Garrett and Sean. Mm-hmm. And their other buddy wasn't able to make it. So it was just the three of us. Yeah. But these guys, it's really funny because they're like going on, they go on, they have these podcasts where they just talk about him. Mm. And it's really, really funny because it's like they take it serious, but they don't take it serious. And it's spreading the word of this really weird guy. So it's as if there was a group of individuals who there, I mean, there is kind of. Where they go around talking about weird people like Tommy Wiseau, for instance. Yeah. Because every like this guy's definitely more talented yeah. than Tommy Wiseau. So and he started off with like an alcohol empire em, empire, sorry, mm-hmm. of sorts. And then now he does like he has like albums out that are ridiculous. They're like the quintessential mm-hmm. Hallmark song that you don't really wanna like nobody wants to pay the money for a decent song, mm-hmm. so they get his songs. Yeah. And it, they all sound the same. So, anyways, that guy is super weird. You can always you can check that deep dive. The guys that I did it with are really awesome, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it's just a it was a good time. I had really enjoyed it, and it was cool seeing like a really legit studio setup. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's start with off with the Mandalorian because sure. that's fresh. Yep. We got some movie reviews. We got some trailer reviews. We got some poster shit. Some bullshit from Pete Davidson because, of course, um. Let's get at it. Mandalorian 4 and 5. What were they called? Gunslinger was number 5. Yep. And the number 4 was... Mandalorian. Episode 4. Episode 4. This is the one that like got the world on fire. And by fire, I mean got everybody talking about Yoda with the cup. 
Okay. You saw it, right? The four? Yeah. 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 Where he has a little cup. That's mm-hmm. why the meme's everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, And everyone loves that meme. Um, yeah, it was... That one was interesting. Anthony said he didn't like it. He didn't like four. He didn't like four. See, I liked four over five. You liked four over five? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, and I noticed in the... I didn't... I haven't noticed the credits for the other episodes, but Bryce Dallas Howard directed this one. That's right. Or directed four. I don't mm-hmm. know who directed five, but... Um, yeah, I did notice that right off the hub, Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah. Was it right in the beginning? Yeah. Oh, it's called Sanctuary. Yeah, yeah Sanctuary. Go. I thought it was... Uh, I didn't mind either of these episodes. Yeah. Um, I, For some reason, I think maybe because we're now into episode four and five, whereas one, two, and three were really like, this is new, this is whatever, Yeah. and now we're just in it, maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's the case. Yeah. Um, You like both? I like both. If I have to pick one over the other, I kind of liked four. There's okay. a little bit more going on in four than there was in five, to be honest. Interesting. Okay. Well, I mean, there definitely was. Yeah. I thought the opening was, I thought it was a flashback again mm-hmm. to when he was young. Yeah, yeah. Turns yeah. out it kind of was a flashback, but not for him. Yeah, it yeah. was for the sanctuary itself. Yeah, uh, I don't remember what the planet was. Nobari, no, Nobarian, something, Noob, something. Start no, with an N. Oh no, no, you're thinking of Navarro or the one that they brought up in episode five. Yes, that's where he. That's took where the he kid. took the kid. Okay, that's so where sanctuary is somewhere that. else. Okay, yeah, um, we got to see our first ATAT since the fall of the empire. Yeah, since the fall. Um, so that was really cool, and yeah. they did some trickery there where they did it at night. Yes. And so they can hide the CG. Yeah. But it really worked. Because mm-hmm. when those eyes came up, I was like, oh, man, this has got like, it had a Terminator vibe to it. Yeah. When that showed up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gina Carano. Yep. Uh, who you may know from Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deadpool 1. She was in this. Yeah. Um, they had a cool little fight scene. They did. That was sweet. And that's where the Yoda with the cup. Mm-hmm. Um, but. And then. So it started off with the mom and her son, or daughter, sorry. Yeah. When they were getting attacked by those. Did we find out who, do you find out who what those, those guys, creatures what those are? Things were? Yeah. I can't remember what the name was, but they were just some, some whatever. That happened to have an ATAT. Yeah. yeah they stole it. the fucking weird thing. Yeah. Um, so clearly they're using it to their advantage, yeah. take advantage of these people and take their resources and whatever. And so clearly those villagers found out there's a Mandalorian nearby and like they came hat in hand it's like we need your help yeah and we need your help yeah so it's like it's definitely showing his soft side overall like and i mean he keeps he kind of breaks down his walls as he keeps going through his journey right now and it's like uh he's helping this this these people he's brought in the mer- she's a mercenary correct gina carano she's a yeah. fr- something like that or she, she was, was already there too yeah exactly yeah. she was hiding away she's that's why i said like go find your own planet kind of thing yeah. so it's like um, that was pretty interesting. And then, you know, he almost had a glimpse. Clearly they were there for quite a while after the attack. He said weeks. Yeah. And then, so that's and a decent they, amount of time that's passed by for them anyway in their story. So I thought that was weird though, that he was there for weeks. Like I thought he was going to drop off baby Yoda and yeah. go off. And then they said, Oh, you know, he's been good for him for the past couple of weeks. It's like, well, I didn't get that time. That seemed like it was like the next well, day. Well, yeah, but that's, that's the kind of the nature of the beast with this type of film that you just kind of have to fill in the gaps on your own and realize, okay, they took a breather. Um, but they straight up they're tell just, you. Yeah. They're establishing, they're trying to establish that he's taking, he might've sought as opportunity from the very beginning. It's like, this could be a good place for him way in the outskirts. No one knows where he is, but that's why he took him there to begin with. Um, right. To he, the sanctuary. Yeah. Like he, no, he, didn't, he, he knew didn't. about it. No, he didn't. Then how did he, why did he end up there? Don't you remember those villagers came and found him? But he was already... Where was he? He was at a ship. But where was his ship? I don't know. Okay. Somewhere somewhere in the main all, city. This is why I'm saying... Because they took a ma- they took that little transport all the way from their village to this little city that he was at. That, I, I get that. What okay. I'm saying is at the end of three, okay. he's flying away. Okay. That Okay. We had that jetpack thing, whatever. Sure, I sure, sure. One of those. And then he's flying away and he says this place is going to be good. Yeah. When he finds, when he heads to the planet itself. So before he meets Gina Carano, yeah. he has to land on this planet that he knows or has an idea that it's going to be good for him. That's why he's taking him there. So he must have known about this sanctuary. I don't think so. Well, why would he end up there? Just because. I don't know. So I, th- I think he picked it for a strategic thing because it's kind of out of the way. Not many people travel it. Like maybe that's why he took it. So I don't. It's unknown. He says this yeah. is a best bet to at least hide away, and then he found Ooh. the sanctuary after. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, he didn't. Fi- he didn't it. find the sanctuary at all. He g- brought so there. They led them. They, yeah. they those farmers found him exactly. But how did the farmers find him? Because they knew Mandalorian was in town. I'm pretty sure that's the talk of the town. As soon as someone like that rolls around, Prince Ali. Uh, no. Um, yeah. And then they have that fight scene with Gina Carano. Mm-hmm. Then they go there and see. For me, this episode was fine. Was good. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked five better than four. Okay, and I think because four was very quick to do things. Mm-hmm. So this is what I mean about the. They tell you that they've been there for a couple of weeks. Okay, it doesn't feel like they've been there for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. It feels like literally like the next day or two days. Yeah. After. Um. Everything moved pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's a half an hour episode, but I honestly think they could have spread this episode alone Mm -hmm. into two. And Uh, and I'll tell you why. mm -hmm. Because there's no way in, like, you you get there, then we find out there's these things that attack them, and then there's an AT-AT, and we're going to put this plan together in a short amount of time. And And it wasn't a short amount of time because, again, weeks, right? The training and all that. Yeah. But given that the episodes are half an hour or 40 minutes long, mm-hmm. it would have been better suited for me if they would have split it up into two. And because this is a sanctuary, so it has meaning of importance, right? Okay. Um, the decision to leave Baby Yoda there weighs heavy on him and... I think. And, you know, it's a decision he has to make because he's been protecting this thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they've established a relationship with the, I guess she's the leader or the the, the mother who lost her yeah. husband and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the child that lost her dad and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then Gina Carano's like, oh, why don't you stay here? Be with her and everything's like that. It's like, well, that went fast. Yeah. So a lot of that, they could have stretched out over a couple episodes and let them breathe a little bit there mm-hmm. that w- then the second episode would have led with the final no. battle or at least they can finish off with just the two eyes rising cut and then next episode is that now they've got to do the ATAT like they can do a quick flashback to add to, to some of the runtime yeah and then they can start it from there I just again from start to finish it felt very quick. They just happened to find the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. That news got to them really fast. They convinced him to go there. Um, they went there, they trained everybody, all of that. Boom, 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 boom. Next mm-hmm. thing you know, we've been here for a couple of weeks and I'm leaving. Yeah. That was my issue. It was felt really But rushed. it's not the type in my opinion, the type of show that it that it's established now is that it finishes off whatever it's happening in that moment and it's done. The next time you're somewhere else, you're dealing with another situation. So as much as you'd want to fill in the gaps with a little bit extra, I think the show, in my opinion, established that it's it's better off. Like you fill in some of the unnecessary key things that you think is there. And it works. I think it works anyway. But they stretched out episode two and three, though. Not really. It was just he it was, was it he was, was one over. bounty. It was go get Baby Yoda, fight the thing, okay, and then come back, then save Baby Yoda from whoever the Empire or whoever was having him, fight all of the guild people, and then leave. And now we're kickstarting another chapter of our. But that was episode. different. But, Again, but you said this show has established itself to finish off in one. So how come literally the but, second episode? They've already stretched out one one narrative, let's say, of the Baby Yoda story. But the narrative of the Baby Yoda is the whole show. Well, we don't know that yet. We, so far we do. We know that it's his relationship with the Baby Yoda. Okay. We don't know what importance the Baby Yoda has. And we only think it's important because we know who Yoda is. Mm-hmm. And the show's called The Mandalorian. And this is the one thing I probably got wrong when I was talking about the first or second episode. Mm-hmm. Um. And I think actually it was the first episode with the Yoda, baby Yoda thing. Yeah. But anyways, um, where this may have more importance, right? But we don't know that yet. What we yeah. do know is that it's called The Mandalorian. Okay. And we do know now after episodes two and three, and actually even one, two, and three, that they're they're bridging these things across. Actually, yeah. They're, they're bridging these things across a couple episodes. So that's what led me to believe of like that, hey, you can spread for into five and then have five as its own episode because hmm. episode five felt like it was more at pace with at least the first three episodes because it, it felt like it took its time a little bit and it actually did focus on a singular event of going after mm-hmm. this other bounty hunter with this kid that wants to be in the guild yeah you know what i mean and they were on tatooine too right uh no it was was it oh, i can't remember what it was called i think it was tatooine because they they had the um what the what are those sand things that attacked uh 
R two D two and uh, and Luke that uh, those fucking things. Anyways, yeah, um, that one was that one was kind of interesting because for me it kind of it was nice to put Baby Yoda aside for a bit. Yeah, and let it be the Mandalorian. Stuff. So, with this season, um, she's established. She's reached twenty five years already on the mm-hmm. throne, I believe. Yeah, twenty five years, and uh, so it's just more her family dynamic and her sister and that kind of stuff. And we'll see how it progresses. I, I it doesn't appeal to everybody by any means, but um, I, I I enjoy it enough. It's interesting, and I'm, it's I'm, still recent history. I'm a big Downton Abbey fan, so I just yeah. I watched the first four episodes. And it was there's no other reason uh, that that I can think of than something else might have come out, mm-hmm. and I ended up shifting to that mm-hmm. because I remember watching the first three or four episodes. I'm like, oh, this show's really good. Yeah, and I don't know what steered me away, but mm-hmm. I, yeah, I I watched Downton Abbey the whole thing, and I think Downton Abbey is yeah. outstanding. Yeah, except I haven't seen the movie. Um, you also saw Ford versus Ferrari. Yes. This was talk amazing. about it. This was an amazing movie. Um, right away, I'm comparing it to Rush with uh, Chris Hemsworth, and I don't know who they got, but it's not Days of Thunder. No, Days of Thunder is NASCAR garbage. Anyways, <laughs> but uh, Rush was pro- is my kind of benchmark, and like this is probably as good, if not somewhat a little bit better in its own way. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like it's pretty amazing. You have these real people, real characters and stuff like that. And you read up about them, uh, who they were in real life and what they actually contributed to that sport and the infamous photo with um, the whole the whole Le Mans winning and they made that driver, Ken, Ken Miles, uh, hold back in order to have all, Ford, all the Ford's vehicles cross the finish line at the same time. Hmm. And that driver got screwed because they by technicality they said the one car was a little bit ahead and he never won the Le Mans title like he he was rightfully owed um but Matt Damon was amazing in it as Carol Shelby uh was it um Christian Bale Christian Bale I keep forgetting his name every time I try to think of it I don't know why Batman from Dark Knight <laughs> I can't I can't not think of the wart that's in his eye every time yes yeah, it's, it's, should I, get that checked I, out I saw that once yeah in a on a YouTube video yeah and I was like, I will never not see it yeah. every time I see his face. So anyways, and, Christian Bale is Ken Miles, the driver. Mm-hmm. And like their dynamic is really good. In the end, they're like they're really close friends, but they like they butt heads and stuff like that. Cause he's like his own way is British and does things the way he wants to. And then you have Carol Shelby who's helping him, fighting for him, but he's also trying to play the, po- the politics game with like the big heads. Cause at the time, Carol Shelby was just fresh off of his own driving career. He won the Le Mans the first time, the first American ever to win it. And um, Ferrari dominated after that kind of thing, and so. But it was, it was a very interesting story. It was very well done, uh, intense to watch, and stuff like that with the way the vehicles were going, and mm. it, it was really awesome. It was cool. Speaking of awesome, this is gonna be like like reviews, balls out reviews. Yeah, basically. Um, knives out. Amazing. We both saw it now. Yes. We went different times. Yes. Uh, Anthony, the good lad that he is, or he can be. Got me free tickets to go. Him and I went, but he had an extra ticket yeah. for me to go. Um, yeah, fuck. 
If there was one movie that could mm-hmm. bring Ryan Johnson out of the last Jedi funk and yeah. into back into the spotlight, it's this one. Yeah. And I think because of this one, yeah. Because you know he's got those quotes where he's like, "I'd like to direct yeah. an episode in season two or whatever guest yeah. direct, right?" Yeah. And I've said this before. I still think he was a good director. Yeah. And I didn't hate Last Jedi as much as some people. I can mm. see why. So for me, it didn't matter too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd definitely see him do a Mandalorian episode. Mm-hmm. Fucking have everybody do it. Yeah. Fucking Quentin Tarantino did a CSI Las Vegas episode. Two of them. <laughs> Ryan Johnson could do a Mandalorian episode. Anyways, Knives Out. So good. Oh, yeah. Did you did it, did it kind of make you... Have you ever seen House of Cards? Yeah. Okay. Did you kind of feel like Daniel Craig's role yeah. would have been given to Kevin Spacey if Kevin Spacey wasn't like, yeah, you know, I could see that the, going through the, the shit only thing they were missing is him talking to the camera. Yeah. For breaking the fourth wall kind of. Yeah. Thing. Which the yeah. yeah. But no, but Daniel Craig was unreal. I, he you know what? So these good. ensemble movies, I, I think they've, they've been doing pretty great lately. Like, I mean, I can't imagine too many ones that have kind of flopped, in my opinion. Well, Midnight Express didn't get as much love um, as no uh, it should Murder have. on the Orient. Or Murder, or, yeah, Murder on the Orient. Yeah, Express. see, that didn't get enough love, but I still liked it. It had it an all star cast, and yes, it, I think it, it was just slow. I have the seen pace it. was very slow. It's on Netflix now. I know. I'm planning. To so see it's it tomorrow. it's a slow pace, but. Again, the reveal at the end is really good, and uh, I'm still excited for the sequel. Like they're still going forward with it. Uh, Gal Gadot is attached to it as well, so mm-hmm. it's very good. But the ensemble stuff is doing very well. Like you had a heavy hitters in this. You had Don Johnson, Christopher Plummer, uh, Chris Christopher Hemsworth, awesome. Chris, Chris, Chris it's, Evans, Chris Evans. Sorry, yeah, Hemsworth. What, one of the Chris's. One of the Chris's. <laughs> All of the Chris's. Yeah, uh, but yeah, Captain America being a dick. The entire time. The fact that he told... Oh, by the way, spoilers. Should we do spoilers? No. Yeah, man. Who cares? No, we, we, we won't go heavy spoilers. Sorry. We won't. <sighs> um, and I'll tell you why. Because this is this just came out last week. I guess. And if we did an actual review on its own, then whatever. Yeah. But at one line that Chris Evans said, and this doesn't spoil anything, he goes to one of the younger characters and he's like, hey, how's your SJW degree coming along? Oh, yeah, yeah, Which is so funny because I've made fun of Chris Evans on this show being a massive SJW. Yeah. And I thought it was the funniest fucking thing ever. Yeah. Um, that he said it. But yeah, he was, he was like... He was the dick because they had that eat shit, eat shit in the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, he was good. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis was awesome. Yeah. She was so good. Uh, uh, Daniel Craig himself. Of Daniel course. Craig was awesome. Tony Collette was awesome. Yeah. Um, who else was there? I'm bringing up the cast list right now. Yeah. Everyone was. So- oh, fucking Michael Shannon was yes. so good. Yeah, yeah. Like, what the fuck, man? He was yeah. so good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, everybody in this was was awesome. Yeah, like it was, so, and, and like the story was good. Story was very good. Like I tried to piece it together as I went along, and like I was talking a little bit to the people I went with, and just saying I think this happened because that's that's the kind of the fun part about the murder mysteries. Like you want to discuss sure. it as it's going on. You're like, oh, maybe this happened. Maybe yeah. this is going on. And honestly, at one point I was like, no, they're not going to make it that obvious. Let's go. Come on. Yep. Um. Yeah. Like there's a there's like I can't, I can't do spoilers. No, you Bullshit. can't do it. Can't. Bullshit. But anyways, there's a lot of times I like I had a few theories going on and both were wrong and right in mm-hmm. the own way. It's just how they concluded it mm-hmm. was very smart and very well done. And um yeah. I, I thought Daniel Craig as like as the in private eye character is what he did at the start when he's just like feeling everyone out and creeping them and everyone after a while they're they're trying to like piece together what is he doing who is this guy yeah. it's like oh don't worry <laughs> and and the thing is, is that, uh, so uh ethan was telling me like he's got he says he's got a kingsman vibe i'm like it's not kingsman at all the yeah. color palette might feel like it that's probably more what you'd have to attribute it to, to if yeah. you want to say it looks like it and feels like it yeah. it's definitely the palette you're right it's super I would say it's super contained and a good, like mm. the way it opens is really good. Yeah. The aesthetic is really nice. Yeah. Daniel Craig's intro. Mm-hmm. I didn't even notice it. Yeah. Like just when you watch it and you're just like sitting there and at first you don't really catch it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, because really you're focused early on. Um, where is it? No, not knives. I don't want to buy a knife. <laughs> Fuck you. Google sometimes. Come on, come on. Tony Collette was really good in it too. Yeah, Lakeith Stanfield. 
because I'm more focused on the Keith Stanfield in the beginning because he's like leading the thing, right? And then it ends up just like evolving and introducing Daniel Craig in a really funny way. Like yeah. at the same time as he's being introduced kind of to everybody else. Yeah. They notice him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was it was good. Yeah. Uh and I had the same thing. So I had I had things right, but they were ten percent of what was actually happening. So it's like I'm going down the path, for instance, and I just kept going right instead of left. Yeah. For instance. Like I kept I kept or I kept going left instead of right, whatever. Like I had just little theories that ended up some like they ended up being right, yeah, but in the wrong way. Mm. And I'm like, that's really smart. And like the, yeah. the stuff that they added in the beginning that really kind of threaded the needle towards the end and the way that they they that Ryan Johnson put the whole thing together and the oh yeah, it was highly, highly recommended. Oh yeah. Which goes to another point of mine is that this year there's been some really, really great movies. Yeah. Like and I'm saying great movies in terms of like not the ones where like last year, for instance, there was a lot of really great films that came out like Oscar movies, for instance, that barely anybody saw. Yeah. And it seems like this year, a lot of people went to go see these movies mm-hmm. like the Knives Out, like the Ford versus Ferrari, which I'm still planning on seeing. Yeah. Um, Like the Once Upon a Time in Hollywoods, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Joker, like these are just. Yeah. The, these are like you walk out and you're like, fuck, I've had I myself have had four, if you include Endgame, yeah. really awesome, visceral and like super engaging theater yeah. experiences. Yeah. And again, I love Endgame, mm-hmm. but once upon a time in Hollywood, yeah, I love more Joker. I loved more, but like they're for they're for different reasons. Like, it's, yeah. Yeah, the, the the whole end game love is so different than everything else. But mm-hmm. yeah, this year there's some fucking great movies out yeah. there. It's so awesome to see. Yeah. I'm so happy about it. Yeah. And then uh, of course, The Irishman. Yes. This is fucking weird for me. Mm-hmm. I don't understand and I put this out on on our Instagram account um with the F word podcast if you're interested in checking it out. I don't understand people's complaint about a three and a half hour movie. I want to get my money's worth. If I if I had seen it, but in you're theaters, not paying for anything. No, but here I'm paying for the service. But regard, oh, yeah, regardless right. of that, if even if I went to the theater, I'd be very happy with a three and a half hour film. Maybe if they gave it an intermission, I think that'd be reasonable. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually more like three hours and fifteen minutes, to mm-hmm, be honest, mm-hmm. just because of the credit thing. Um, but. I don't think the length is the problem. I want I want to get my money's worth, especially now with the ticket pricing going up and up. And you, you're, if you want that maximum experience with any theater coming off, like Cineplex has their um, their a, uh, AVX, uh, they got the VIPs going on. They Landmark now has their laser, whatever the hell it is, and it's like top tier equipment, uh, seating, and all that stuff going on. And you're minimum paying. I would say just for the ticket alone, you're paying between fifteen to twenty dollars average, and then however much for your concession. So five hundred dollars for popcorn. Yeah, exactly five hundred dollars. Five hundred. But realistically, day. you're probably each person is spending between thirty to fifty dollars just on themselves, yep. not a couple, a single person. Yep. So it's if I want to, I want to be there and enjoy it fully. Okay. Yeah. So, that being said, mm-hmm. you didn't see it in the theater. I did you not. Didn't, you didn't pay the movie ticket. You right. didn't spend five hundred dollars on popcorn. So, I'm hearing a lot of complaints on people on Netflix. Yeah, because it was only in theaters for two weeks. Yeah, which is you know a pretty shitty thing to do to a Scorsese film. Yeah, uh, I don't know who to blame. I haven't really you know and delved into it. Delved, whatever. Yeah, too much. It's just kind of shitty. Yeah, and I know some people that did happen to go to the theater. It was during a weekday, and weekdays really tough for me. Except for I got lucky on for Knives Out to see it yesterday yeah. or the day before. The day before, no, yeah, yeah, the day before. So we saw it at home, and, okay. I, saw, and I saw people complaining about the three and a half hour runtime. And it's like, come on, you, you and can, I both know, yeah, you've binge watched an entire season of TV. You've taken the day off to binge watch the entire yep. season. You've binge watched the same show. I've binge watched The Office, mm-hmm. um, but I'm also not one of the people that complains about the runtime. Yeah. Uh, did you like the film? I liked it. Did you love the film? I don't. It's not a love thing, but I, I I enjoyed it. Like I was more invested in the characters and the actors more than anything, just because like 
we've just never, the fact that it was De Niro, just the Pacino, fact, and Pesci. Yes, because Pesci and De, and Pacino have never worked together, mm. and I would say Pesci was a very more main focus in a way too. Like he was he was a main person in it in a way because yeah, one of the three for sure it was between Pacino and mainly it's De Niro because it's the Irishman for a reason. But he had a very prominent role in this and stuff like that, and. Um, and he was a different character. It was a very different character. Yeah, he was like Polly. He was the Polly. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. From the Goodfellas, he was the Polly of this yeah. scenario. Yeah, sorry, Polly from Goodfellas. Yeah. Like just the quiet, composed guy that everybody goes to. Everybody and has to charge. ask permission yeah, for. He's exactly. in charge. All of that stuff. Yeah, and he had a way about him on how he talked, and he yeah. he said everything without saying anything. And yeah. that was that was the cool dynamic between him and De Niro, and then you had Pacino, kind of like. Separate. He was on fire. Oh yeah, he I, was so I got, good. I got tingles when he was freaking out, and it reminded me of his of his days. Like he oh. still has that cadence. He still has it. Like oh yeah, like yeah. he hasn't lost that in him, and it's Not even it's close. awesome. Even with the CGI, there's only one or two times I would say like digitally I could see it was really off, mm-hmm. but you really had to look for it. Other than that, I thought their their de aging was very well done. Overall, yeah, yeah, I would say ninety five percent of the film was like awesome. Because at the end of the pretty, day, pretty none flawless. of these guys were meant to be portrayed as young people ever. No, for sure. Even when the flashbacks were happening, he was maybe what in his fifties. Well, except for the soldier one, he would have been in his yeah. like twenties or thirties. That that one is that was one way all the way back. But we're yeah. saying the events that happened during. Yep, they were probably all in their fifties. Yeah, when his like, when his 40s. kids were young and stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So the only thing I could tell is just his movements because he's he's an older gentleman. He doesn't have the same mobility as he used to. You could tell when he yeah. was like when he was like when gunning he, down someone. Yeah, like you could tell his movements were a little bit more rigid than they were like fluid. So, but other than that, film wise, it was awesome. I enjoyed it very much. Again, you're splitting hairs to say, oh, I love the film. No, I didn't love it. I really enjoyed it, though. Well, I'm saying in comparison to like some of his other stuff, too. Uh, those are, I, yeah, they're good, but his other his other stuff's a lot better. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I, I enjoyed it. I didn't see it all in one sitting. Mm-hmm. I'm planning on seeing it in one sitting. I kept getting interrupted and having to leave and come back and then leave and come back. Um, but the first time... Mm-hmm. It was like Soph had passed out on the couch, so it was just like just me watching. Yeah, and it was an hour and forty five minutes. So mm-hmm. the last two times I had to watch it were like not as as long. Um, no, I I was I was engaged the whole time. I was in the whole time. Mm-hmm. I liked all the characters stuff. Um, it was an interesting story because I didn't know much about it, and yeah. it's based off the book uh, A Man Who Paints Houses, or I heard you're a guy who can paint houses yeah. or whatever, and. We don't even know if this is true. Mm-hmm. This is the only account that we have. And then I, after I watched the movie, there was a lot of things I was reading up on or watching and reading up on in regards to like the cinematography and how they shot it and perspective and everything like that. And essentially, this is the perspective of the guy that was interviewing him to begin with. Yeah. So you are the guy he that's interviewing Frank yeah. about what happened, mm-hmm. right? And... Yeah, aside from a couple of CG moments like the soldier scene, I kind of feel they didn't need to show his face at all because that felt like I was watching a modern warfare trailer. Yeah, um, that was that was the big one, and then there was a couple of side shots mm-hmm. early on that didn't look that great. Yeah, now I don't know how they would have translated it on screen, like on a big screen, maybe it didn't been better. But yeah, uh, yeah, no, the performances were all unreal. Al Pacino was unbelievable mm-hmm. in this. De Niro was quite reserved. Like mm-hmm. I, it felt it was sure it was De Niro's movie, but it felt like Pacino's fucking like he was the driving force. Yeah, and he doesn't come in until like forty five minutes into the fucking thing. Right? That's true. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff you've heard about Jimmy Hoffa, like Jimmy Hoffa's body is like the one of the biggest mysteries out there. Yeah, and. This was it was cool, and obviously Scorsese was like the only guy that can do it. I love that so much of his previous work was showcased here. Mm-hmm. So there were some shots he didn't do until Wolf of Wall Street, and that's I, I don't know what the shot is called, but it's like a slow motion tracking shot, mm-hmm. so, and there's music playing in the background, like loud music. So it was like uh, remember when Donnie in Wolf of Wall Street was taking the ludes, and he brought up the Steve Madden. Yeah, Steve Madden, yeah. and as he was going to the pool table, yeah, it was slowing down, and you can see like they they spilt the uh, the booze all over the ludes, and it was slow motion. People were laughing, but yeah, it was still yeah. moving. 
he did that three times in The Irishman, which was, and they were all awesome shots. Yeah. But I hadn't seen it since Wolf of Wall Street. And so it was like a compendium of all of some of his best shots that were so Scorsese mm-hmm. in this movie. And it's like, fuck, this guy pulled everything out. And it shows, and it was like really good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. All across the board, the cast was fucking crazy. I didn't even recognize it was what's his face from. Uh, um. I think he was from The Wire, but remember Entourage? His buddy. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dom. Narja. Yeah. Yeah. Dom from Entourage. He was in there, and like he was a big prominent role. Harvey yeah. Keitel's in there. Fucking Ray Romano was super enjoyable in it. Yeah. He was yeah. Like, oh, like an interesting actor to say the least. Mm-hmm. At least for me. No, overall, really good. Um, yeah. Is it is it as good as... Uh, I think I like Wolf of Wall Street better. Yeah. Uh, I think I like The Departed better. I love The Departed. And and this one's like up there. Yeah. Nothing will touch Goodfellas. I'm just going to like... Yeah. And I don't... And I'm also one of those individuals, and you might disagree, I believe that one artist has one masterpiece. That's the whole point behind it. Yeah, no, I agree yeah. with you on and, that. And, it has to have one that's his top tier. That's it. And I've had conversations with people on this, and they're all like, well, no, they can have multiple ones. I'm like, yeah, but it's a masterpiece. It's one that defines them as a creator. Okay. However, there m- many masterpieces exist across all art, all yeah. film, or whatever. So it's like someone can say, no, they can have multiple ones, because in general, mm-hmm. <coughs> if you're going to take like Leonardo da Vinci... And you're going to take Michelangelo and you're going to say, let's say, the Sistine Chapel is his masterpiece. And you take Leonardo da Vinci and you say, no, the Mo- well, the Mona Lisa is his masterpiece, for instance. Mm-hmm. And then you put them together. It's like, well, these are both masterpieces. In art. In art. And you can't really decide which one's the masterpiece yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, of art because they're so on their own level. Yeah. And yet multiple masterpieces can exist in like the ether. Yeah. But I, I stand to say that each individual artist eventually has their own masterpiece, and yeah. that's it. They don't have multiple ones. Yeah. So for me, it'll always be, in my opinion, Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. Some people might be ending something else. It could be Taxi Driver. It could be Raging Bull. It could be it could be Wolf of Wall Street. It could be Departed or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's gonna be tough to rank this one. Such yeah. a, I, and I have to see it again in one shot. Yeah, like I have to sit down. Watch yeah. that one thing. Um, but yeah, fucking look at that. 45 minutes of straight movie reviews and there you go. TV. Um, let's burn through some of this stuff. Speaking of Scorsese, he's working on the f- a fl- Killers of a Flower of the Flower Moon. Don't okay. know what this is really about. DiCaprio's in it and De Niro. Interesting. So that's it's meant to be like... Um, it's a nonfiction there... book. Okay. Obviously. Um, I'm not sure what the thing is, but Killers of the Flower Moon, the Osage... Murders and oh, and the birth of the FBI. Oh, excuse me, fucking. Birth. So I wonder if he's touching. He he's kind of birth of the FBI. Interesting. So he's That's probably he's probably going on like um, a nonfiction streak where he's trying to like he wants to touch on some like. I think all he does is nonfiction. Uh yeah yeah sorry but he's he's basically actually touching true stories oh, actual historical yeah things. historical stuff well, yeah he did with Goodfellas. Um, but Taxi Driver yeah. was his own creation. There you go. And then Wolf of Wall Street. That's right. So yeah, yeah I guess I, then, that's right. I, I completely forgot. Yeah, those are all true things that have the happened. Departed so. was a story that he like he created. He created yeah. Um, and this one's going to be based off a book. Irishman's based off pretty much the those accounts from yep. Frank. Uh, I forget his last name. Yeah. Did it? Did you give any mind to the people saying that Anna Paquin didn't have any lines in the movie or only had seven? She's maybe not People supposed complaining to. about it. She's well, not that, supposed to. It's not, that's not the movie that he want that he has in making. No, like even Jesse Plemons didn't have that many, which I was surprised he was in it too. Like, but, yeah. But, well, the character Anna Paquin played was Frank's daughter that wasn't talking to him. Yeah, she didn't want to have anything to do with any of this. So the only person she actually talked to was her was uncle Pacino. Jimmy. Yeah, was Uncle Jimmy. Yeah. Also, okay. Aside from the, we already mentioned the cast was pretty awesome. Yeah. I halfway through. Hoffa's wife, Joe, mm-hmm. was the fucking babysitter from Goodfellas. What was it? Yeah, man. I'm sitting there. I'm like, it's fucking her. She's the, with her lucky hat. And they got like, that's how he got busted for cocaine because she called him the landline. But they already had whatever. I'm like, <sighs> what the fuck? He brought them all. That's hilarious. Oh, it was so good. And she was hmm. outstanding in it. I never paid attention to that. Yeah. Um, what did Scorsese said? He asked if he and Scorsese had hit upon an aesthetic theme or tone for the new project. This is for the FBI one. Yeah. 
He said, right now I'm in the process of researching different ways of shooting it, so we still have to actually meet, and I'll show them the images. So they haven't really figured out what it's going to be yeah. like. My guess is going to be like a Departed-esque. I think, think so. Um, yeah, that was a good aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mandalorian 45 we did. Three and a half hours too long. Nope. Uh, Ryan Johnson wants a guest direct we talked about, yep. and that's going to be sweet. Um, Adam Sandler comments, I guess. He's got uncut gems. Yeah, it comes out next week. And it looks really, really good. Yeah. And then he was on Howard Stern, which he doesn't really promote stuff. I didn't know this until I read the article. And I'm thinking, I'm like, yeah, he's he does. He actually thinks it's like being an asshole going up and talking about like movies you're going to be in and stuff. Mm-hmm. I guess he felt compelled to talk about to, this to talk one. about this one, or at least like he felt obligated to mm-hmm. in a, a way that he's like, I don't mind doing this for this. Yeah. But uh, he because this could be really, his masterpiece. I guess so. I, he fucking really wants because he uh, he hasn't done too many serious films in his career like punch drunk love and maybe spanglish honestly click was kind of a borderline it was meant to be comedic but it was also very serious and like yeah but it was only serious for like the last 10 minutes yeah yes and no whatever the rest of it was like a typical slapstick type of thing yeah i get what you're saying yeah for me it's like and then he then he made the comment of i'll go out of my way to make a bad movie because so you pay it yeah and i'm like Dude, it kind of already seems like you've been doing that already, <laughs> so I don't think it matters, Oscar, no Oscar. Your movies have been garbage for a long time now. Yeah. That's why when it, when he said that, I was just like, tell me something I don't know. Yeah. I'm still excited for Uncut Gems. It looks good. That looks outstanding. Yeah. And like, yeah, it looks outside. Oh, he also did that one on Netflix that was very good. Fucking Mar- the Marowitz stories. Uh, I never saw that Dustin one. Dustin Hoffman's in it. He was very good in it. Okay. Very good. Um, he also did one with Don Cheadle that was not a great movie, but it, he was a serious role. In it. Yeah. He's like, he's done shit. And it's like, you know, I get it. But like at the same time, like this is one movie that is contending for an Oscar. Yeah. That's really looks like it could be contending. Just, hmm. I mean, that's based on trailers and buzz. But people are liking it too. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get into some trailers now. We reviewed nice. TV and movies. Let's get into some trailers. The Boys season two. I actually never saw that trailer. Awesome trailer. So Excited. much with no words. Interesting. Is, okay, is this a teaser or is this a full blown trailer? I think it's a full blown. Okay. But my guess is it's just a teaser because it was very like boom, boom, shot here, shot yeah, there, yeah. shot here, whatever. Oh man, that first season was unreal, and yeah. I'm so excited and I'm so happy that I finally got Prime to watch it. <laughs> uh, and this second trailer looked great. Um, Bond trailer, good, amazing. You thought it was amazing. I thought I'm very excited for it. It was very well done. It gives. Again, this is the first full trailer, correct? Yes. So, and it doesn't come out till is it January release, February? Was it February? I can't remember. I gotta check it out. But I thought it was great. No um, time to die. Yeah. We bring back our old pal Felix. Uh, Man, I was so happy J.K. <laughs> Wright's back. I was like, fucking A. Yeah. Wright. He was one of the best parts in yeah. Quantum of Solace. And Rami Malik could be good. <coughs> it's got a phantom of the opera so he's like they're up against yeah. another organization so and we just get a first glimpse of the new a new double o yep um april 3rd 2020 yeah so this should be interesting i'm very excited for it again daniel craig is probably i'll say it he's probably the best bond um yeah i'd say that too 100 percent. we enjoy the golden age of course when sean connery brought it but it's a totally different monster than what it has become now like and we've Again, I think we've established he's the longest running running Bond right now. I think so. This makes it his longest run. Is so, it actually? Yeah, I think so. Why did I think so that going forward, it's going to be very difficult for us to break free from that because we've already established. And I mean, Pierce Brosnan was it for a bit and we enjoyed him and stuff like that. But once you got the better version, which was always an upgrade, like Craig. Yeah. So if the next one's... Next one's going to probably be as good. I don't think, I don't know if it'll reach an upgrade per se. My only concern with this, not concern. Actually, I, I don't think I'll have a concern for this one because it seems to follow the pattern. Casino Royale was awesome. Quantum of Solace wasn't. Um, what was the third one? Skyfall. Skyfall was good, was really good. Um, the ending was kind of, mm-hmm. it felt too Home Alone for me. Mm-hmm. But I rewatched it recently and I was like, no, this is really good. And then we had Spectre, uh, Spectre which was, just boring as fuck. Like, I just couldn't get into it. And then now we have this one. So every second one seems to be, oh, sorry, every, I guess, first, third, fifth <laughs> are all, you know, good. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that this is the one that's going to be really good. Mm-hmm. Everybody looks good in this. I, I do get signs of Spectre or of um, Skyfall in this, though, mm-hmm. where it's like, 
oh, he's too old. He's too this. He's come back. He's come back again. He's yeah. coming back again. And like they brought Christoph Waltz back because why not? <laughs> yep. I am, though, kind of excited also because um, it's not Sam Mendes who's doing it. Mm-hmm. It's Kerry Joji Fuki Fukunaga. No idea who that is. He directed Maniac, which was a Netflix show. It was okay. But he did direct Beasts of No Nation, which was very good. Never saw that. And then he also did It. Okay. The remake. And then he did a show called The Alienist, which is on Netflix. I haven't okay. seen it yet, but it looks really good. Yeah. So, yeah, there's some good stuff there. I don't know. I, I was excited. Yeah. I didn't love it, but I was super excited. Um, and then we've got Black Widow. Finally have the first trailer for the mm-hmm. Black Widow trailer. I was not as excited for it as I thought I was going to be. Really? I'm not going to lie. Go <laughs> ahead. Tell me what you thought. I enjoyed it. It was a fun. At the end of the day, you, you'd obviously... You're gonna still have the elements of the um, the Marvel movie in there, as much as it is it's meant to be a little bit darker film. I would say based on her character and what her past is all about. Um, so Which we, this, sorry, this takes place after Civil War, right? After Civil War, so she obviously breaks free, goes back to Russia, reconnects with her family, and it's it's like a, an Incredibles Russia. Is basically what it feels like. You have her dad, which is like the red. Uh, what is his name again? Something. Yeah. So, but I, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. Um, I hope they do her justice as Black Widow. And well, give they already her... have in the movies. True, but as a standalone, you still want to give it that cherry Absolutely. on top and just say, like, you know what? They did her good. They Absolutely. didn't do her dirty and give her a shitty movie kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So I'm excited for it. It should be fun and interesting. Like and. It's interesting. She's got um, her one suit looks like the doesn't it look like the quantum suits. Her one almost the white one. Yeah, mm, it's got a feel. It's got to feel like the quantum suits or something. But it's just very interesting they went that route with it. But I don't know the the story is up in the air. I I don't really I didn't really pay attention to the story was going. On. I was more immersed in what action was going on. But obviously something from her past is coming forward. So there you go. Well, and they have Taskmaster Master in this. There you go. Um, who's always, he's a really interesting villain. Yeah. And, and and mostly because he is able to adapt to anybody he fights. Yeah. That's what makes him really interesting. Mm-hmm. Someone pointed out that her sister, which I thought the reveal that of the sis was yeah. like, yeah, sis. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Um, that scene was very Jason Bourne, like mm-hmm. very first Jason Bourne. Her sister's vest is apparently the same one as the one that she has in Infinity War. Okay. So I don't know if that's going to be a spoiler that her sister dies and she wears her vest in honor of or has one similar to. Yeah. My concern is that I didn't want... This is just me. Mm-hmm. My face on the fucking microphone. I didn't want a fun family romp or let's go back and find my quirky family. You already have a quirky family. Yeah. Your whole backstory has been set up to be you have red on your ledger. Yeah. And I was really hoping for it to be a solo Mm -hmm. character piece with some action, but noir style action. Because... I don't know. It just feels like she lends herself well to that. Mm-hmm. Like, I really want to see the Red Room stuff, which I'm sure they're going to show. Yeah. and it, But it also has a Civil War vibe where she has to go back to the Red Room and take it down, much like Bucky had to go back to Siberia yeah. to destroy the supposed super soldiers that they thought they were coming, but yeah. it ended up being not. Yeah. And, yeah, the whole quirky family thing, it's like, again... She said she found one in the Avengers, like mm-hmm. the family that she has. No mention, and obviously she's a secretive person, and all that. Mm-hmm. And and then Loki was like Draco's daughter, and we assumed that her dad had died. Yeah. So Loki dropping the Draco's daughter mm-hmm. might be that he thought, but he knows. These but is she meant to be adopted into this new family, or and her birth father is Draco? Maybe. I don't is know. Drakov or Draco? I don't know. Anyways. So there's shades of that that kind of bother me, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Like, again, and mostly because I was really expecting a different movie. Yeah. Um, one that's not even, fuck, one that wasn't even tied into the MCU at all would have been ideal for me. Mm. Like, really, for me, it's like, go Red Room, that's it. I feel they'd have to do a prequel. But they'd still have to stay within the MCU, what they've established. Not, not if they, because no, because we just know of her yeah. coming into Iron Man two already as 
a soldier. Okay, uh, right? yeah, that's fine. So but... what I wanted to see, what I was hoping to see, is something leading up to her being like, like I don't know, her end- ending up in fucking Budapest with Hawkeye, or or her going and save. Was it her that saved Hawkeye? Well, this might is this the Budapest event that they've talking about? No, because this is after all that. Budapest happened way after, or way before, sorry, Avengers 1. Is that what they said? Yeah, they said, you and I, the the, the joke that they had was, you and I remember Budapest very mm. differently. Okay. So clearly they had years of service together before they even, like, before even Iron Man 2. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, again, there's there's some concerns there, um, mostly because, again, it's just a different, it's a different film than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So it's a me problem. Okay. I'm still going to go Deal see with the it. fuck out of it. And by the fuck out of it, I'm going to go see it. Um, Bond and Birds of Prey posters. I love those Birds of Prey posters. Did you see them? They were great. Oh, yeah. I sent them. Yeah. Yep, they were, I saw them. They were awesome. Yeah. Uh, the Bond posters seem like typical Bond yeah. posters. But no, the Birds of Prey ones were outstanding. Yeah. I just love the aesthetic. I love the look of it. I like That alone is making me super excited. Mm-hmm. And I keep wanting... like. Yes, fucking make posters like this. Mm-hmm. These are the posters that we want to see. Yeah, if they don't f- do it- the fucking blending fifty photo. I mean, you don't have fifty people, but with these ensemble movies, mm-hmm. you can't fucking blend everything together. Like, I like Ragnarok's poster because mm-hmm. it had that aesthetic of like the center, everything moving down the center. Uh, the Avengers one was great. Like when we're talking about like those movies, for mm-hmm. instance, Justice League's had a cool color palette to it. Dark Knights is unreal, but I, I I miss the yeah I really miss the days of them not being too generic with posters. And I think yeah. if you get a chance, just look up Birds of Prey posters, the character posters, mm-hmm. and they all look really good. Um, so last night I sent a message to the group, and it was a photo from Zack Snyder. Oh yeah, and Zack Snyder had pretty much stated. The Snyder Cut does exist. Last week, okay, uh, on Zack Snyder's, uh, was it his Twitter? Yeah. Is it real? Does it exist? Of course it does. That was directly from Zack Snyder's Instagram. I believe it's his Instagram. Mm -hmm. Last week, Anthony and I, or not last week, the week before, got into it over what part of Justice League was the Snyder Cut and what was it, how much of it was used. He was saying that 40 or 50%. I was saying that doesn't matter too much because of how Ben Affleck felt, looked like he didn't give a shit and all that stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, first of all, vindication because it exists. And okay. It was straight from Schneider's mouth. So I sent a thing to the group chat with a gif of Holt, Captain Raymond Holt, doing the vindication. Mm-hmm. So that I, so I'm saying it on record right now that Anthony seemed to be more right than I was, and I was more wrong than I thought I was. And also, supposedly they only used 10 percent of Snyder's actual shots in the movie, and. The Snyder Cut was three and a half hours long. Okay. So based on that, we're getting a whole new movie. Basically. Totally different. So yeah. could happen. Might not. Who knows? From what, yeah. From what we know, they're not even going to release it at all. Because it's up to the studio to release it. Exactly. They're still going to make money. Even if they release it as a digital download or a Blu-ray or 4K thing or a limited release in theaters for like a month and then that's it. Because they've made, I think they've made money, or they lose money on Justice League. I think they lost, but I'm not sure. Oh yeah, yeah, they lost a couple of million because that's the whole thing was like if that's a million more. dollar mustache <laughs> deficit. Yeah. yeah, fuck, we would have made up the difference if it wasn't for that fucking mustache. So there you go. So who knows what they'll do if, as as we've seen the last little bit, the trend of like social media, they have the they do have a little bit of power to make things happen because at the end. At the end of the day, that's what your audience is, right? So it's mm-hmm. like, it might not always work, but maybe this time it will. Who knows? Yeah, I, I would know. go see it if they released it on on in theater and say, "Hey, this is this is the actual Snyder cut. It's three and a half hours. We're gonna do an intermission, an hour and a half. What the hell?" Then I'm a game. I'm more curious now than I was two weeks ago because yeah. if it is true that only ten yeah. percent of it was used, yeah. That's a whole different thing than even fifty yeah. percent. I'm just I'm just annoyed that there's been nothing but Schneider cut news, Schneider cut just release it. Just call it a day for all of us. Like I just mm-hmm. I'm just annoyed at hearing any more of it. Speaking of which, we never talked about this. Well, it kind of re- was last week that it came out. Um, Michael B. Jordan going to talk about a Superman movie. 
Oh yeah, he put he's put his hat in the ring for quite a while actually. But I think he's he nothing new. Pitch an idea. Oh, he pitched an idea. Okay. Yeah, I think he's been meeting with Warner Brothers or met with Warner Brothers yeah. to pitch a Superman movie where he plays Superman. All the power to him, man. Uh, if he yeah, he'd he'd have to do it obviously out of what they're trying to do, but I don't think a studio would back that because they're gonna Warner Brothers specifically because they own the rights, right? Is yeah. Warner Brothers that own it? Yeah. So I don't think they would say like, listen, we have our Superman for now. If it was ever a moment where we knew he, we didn't have him, then they might consider it. Because Henry Cavill's still in. He's like, in. He's 100% I'm, I'm game. Still in. So it doesn't make sense for him to... Where his his Superman could work is in the whole CW shit going on right now where the they have... Crisis, like, where it's alternate crisis universes. Crisis on So he could be in the alternate <laughs> universes like that. So he might not get a feature film, but he definitely could touch base with a TV But he's spot. pitching... I, I think he's pitching a feature film. Like, I, I think he's know. pitching an independent film starring him as Superman. Yeah. My only thing is that, yeah, sup- like Henry Cavill is still Superman. And yeah. don't get me wrong... There's a ton of fucking Supermans like that they could do, but really, there's only one at a time outside from the TV stuff. Yeah, every single time there's been another Superman, the, the other ones passed on, and like they've waited years before they touch on it again. But this also goes to him what he said a few years ago. I think it was last year, a few years ago, where he wants to go for exclusively white roles. Yeah. Okay. That's that's his thing where he's like, mm. if there's a if it's Superman and he's a white guy, well, I want to play him as a black guy. If there's Spider Man, well, they already have Miles Morales. So mm. if there's Batman, I want to be the like I want to play Batman and do yeah. it and stuff. And like I said, all the power to you because you know mm. King Ben Kingsley played fucking Gandhi and he's not Indian, right? But like you know, in this day and age, if uh, fucking Christian Bale wanted to play Shaft. I'm pretty sure everybody would be up in arms and be attacking him. So no. just keep that in mind. Yeah. Just keep that in mind. So we need the white Michael B. Jordan to come forward and say, I want all the predominantly black roles. Is there a white Michael B. Jordan? I don't know. Just a, an actor who thinks the same way he does, not. Oh like, yeah, in that well, context, that's that, yeah. again. This is this is the thing. Then we argue about it all, or we talk about it all the time, where it's like, put the rolls in the other, like put the foot on the other shoe, yeah, or shoe on the other foot, shoes sure. on feet, whatever. Anyways, and think about what the optics look and see how messed up it looks at the optics like that. But doing it the other way is perfectly fine. Yeah. Again, this is just this is just the way that my mind works, where it's like it has nothing to do with anything except with if you can put them on both feet. Then great, mm-hmm. do it. And if they want to make a Superman, with, sorry, Michael B. Jordan, I'll go fucking see it. Mm-hmm. You know, but I know that because he's made those comments before, this is kind of why he's doing it. Yeah. It'd still be sweet though. Um, Mena Masood, who played Aladdin, yeah, uh, says he hasn't had a single audition mm-hmm. since Aladdin. Now he wasn't Jack Ryan, but I don't know if Jack Ryan came out before Aladdin or after. I think it was after. Yeah, I remember. Maybe. Um, or it was before. He mm. was good in that too. It was a yeah. small role, but like most of the roles were small, except for Jack Ryan himself. Yeah. And um, fuck, who's that actor? He's in everything. I'm gonna look him up right now. Mm. But Will Smith mentioned that, like, hey, you know, he's a super talented actor. Uh, he's Wendell Pierce. He's that fucking guy's in everything. And he's mentioned that. I think what this is kind of this is a conversation I think we've had before. Mm-hmm. When it comes to people feeling like they're going to get typecast. Yeah. And then what happens is they end up taking anything that they can find and then they start diluting their product. Mm-hmm. And he even said, it's like that you're going to make millions of dollars and you're going to be okay because you did Aladdin and all that. And he says, that's not the case. Yeah. And I believe him. Yeah. I 100% believe him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think there's just like, when you look at the box office, it's not like, oh, these actors made $100 billion. It's like, no, they didn't. Will Smith made the most amount of money out of anybody in that entire thing. Yeah. And then everybody else made a very small portion. Yeah. But it's Will Smith and he, that's, that's what his years of service to the craft yeah. has brought him. Yep. Right. And, Let's be honest. He fucking killed it. Yeah. He did so good. Mm -hmm. And he probably had the toughest role out of anybody. Yeah. I think that like when it comes to the typecasting thing, and this is something I've just like messed around in terms of theories. If you let enough time pass, Mm -hmm. then you won't get typecast because yeah, they might remember you use that. But if you're like, you've seen actors and actresses come back after years and they're like, oh fuck, they're really good. Or this is the guy that used to be here and he's really good. Like Anthony Michael Hall, probably the most typecast guy from the 80s. And Don Johnson, fucking Miami Vice. And now he's like been in quite a few. He was in a Tarantino movie. Mm -hmm. He was in Django. 
he was in Knives Out, and he's probably been in some other ones, and he's a good actor. Yeah. It's like, it, and I can understand that it's super frustrating because yeah. you're not even getting the fucking auditions, and you were in a big movie. Yeah. I don't know. Well, even Chris Evans, like he could be easily typecast as Captain America for the rest of his life, but mm-hmm. he kind of did a good, smart thing, and he took a role in Knives Out as a dick. And he was in Red Sea, which I haven't seen yet. Yeah, I haven't seen it's that on either. Netflix. Yeah. Um, but if you look at him in Snowpiercer, Snowpiercer is mm-hmm. unbelievable. Yeah, he was great. So he's already he's already broke his ground to get into something different and yeah. try to break that mold and say like, I'm yeah. not just Captain America. I'm someone else as well. Well, and Robert Downey Jr. is doing Doctor Doolittle. Yeah, you know, and he and he'll probably go do some stuff. Problem is, Doctor Doolittle. It's it's, a, it's seems like a very familiar character between what he does for Sherlock. It's yeah. very similar and. The accent is different, but yeah, it yeah. seems kind of similar. But I honestly feel like that type of movie with like a lot of these ones where we have to re- really think, are these movies made for us? No. Like even Tom Hardy and Venom only did it because his kids thought it was going to be cool. Yeah. He didn't fucking want to do Venom. If it wasn't for his kids, mind yeah. you, he was doing number two, but that's because he's going to make a lot of money from it, right? Yeah. So then Robert Downey Jr. is like, yeah, that'd be fun. It's a kid's film. Yeah. You know, Disney's been good to me, real yeah. fucking good to me. And I'll do it. I think one of Tom, just speaking on Tom Hardy, one yeah. of his best roles is probably Alfie Solomon's on Peaky Blinders. I think. Watch him in Legend. I saw that. He's, he's good. really good, yeah. He's, he's good. really good. He's good in that. But he, yeah, I like his role in Peaky Blinders. Yeah. And he also did, there's another one I can't think of. But he's just a good actor, so it's like, yeah. forget it. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah. Anyways, I, I think I think he's talented. Yeah. The uh Mena Masood, and I think he's gonna find roles. I think so I too. think it's just gonna be a matter of like just take some time. Find Maybe he something should be the new smaller. Prince of Persia. Dude, he'd be really good. He's already he's got, got the got parkour. Some, he's got some fucking <laughs> so he's, skills. He's man. typecast he's a little bit, but yeah. it's not it's for a different reason. <laughs> no, you know what? He'd be really good as the Prince of Persia, yeah. honestly, but I don't think that's the right role for him. I still don't want Jake Gyllenhaal back for it. I think what he needs <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think what he needs Well, that's another one. So Jake Gyllenhaal is the fucking Prince of Persia. Like that's fucked up when you think about it. And bit. it's not even a, a thing of like, oh, ban it shit on Gyllenhaal. It's just the way things were then. Yeah. Right. And then now the opposite is happening, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's fine, mm-hmm. right? But instead of moving... So it's 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 kind of as fucked up as it sounds. Instead of actually moving forward, what's happening is that we're just flipping things the other way and then yeah. letting them run that way for a while, yeah. right? Like, just let everybody take all the roles or whatever, but don't let these people take these roles. Yeah. And that's, that's a dangerous game, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Ghostbusters arriving 2020. Mm. Trailer dropping Monday. And that's with the original cast. I believe so. Yeah. Do I care? Honestly, no. Mm. Um, and then George Miller working on the next Mad Max. So he's working on a film with Tilda Swinton and uh, Idris Elba, which hmm. just the fact that those two are in it, I'm for sure in. Uh, Is this meant to be like a follow-up to Fury Road? I think it has something to do. Like he's not done, he said, with the Mad Max world. Oh, that's good. Uh, if they bring Charlize Theron back, and really make a Furiosa driven movie. Like yeah. she was fucking awesome. She was good. She was so good yeah. in that movie. I would like I would watch her character in a single thing all day. Mm-hmm. Um and then what the fuck else was sent? I think Anthony had sent something in the chat. Peter Skarsgård has been cast in Batman, but no one knows who. Mm. Have they cast Riddler yet? No, I don't think so. I can see him being the Riddler. Um yeah, I think he's got a he's got a good riddler riddler look to him. Oh, didn't we say the riddler is that one guy? No. In the Batman? Who do we say riddler is? Penguin is Colin Farrell. Okay. Supposedly. And they haven't cast Riddler yet. Uh, isn't it that young actor? I think so. Then I don't know who he's gonna play. <laughs> Interesting. Take I don't know. know. I don't know. If we find it, we'll probably bring it up next week. But yeah, I, I he, he just, he's got a Riddler look to him. I think he'd be fucking awesome as the Riddler. Hmm. And then, um, I guess we got to end this. Oh, also, I don't like the title Assassin's Creed Ragnarok. No. 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 I think they need to call it Valhalla. They need to, what was the name they used? Was it Valhalla that you said, or what did you say? I said, yeah, Valhalla. That'd be great. Some people are even saying Kingdom. That would be amazing. So, I don't know. Not AC again. Ragnarok. These are rumored stuff. Yeah, and the only reason they'd they'd use the word Ragnarok, it's one of the more synonymous words that comes with the Viking. It makes era. people excited, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay, 
We'll dig it. It is what it is. I be as much as I love the AC series or mm-hmm. loved the AC series. They're going a little too off the rails right now. Mm-hmm. And if they take the Ragnarok title away from God of War, which I know God of War is not going to be called God of War Ragnarok, mm-hmm. but right now God of War Four has established that their world is bringing about and has been the effect of Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. So we don't need another Viking game because guess what? We have God of War fucking shit up. Mm-hmm. Um, two more things. Pete Davidson does things that make me dislike him more and more, uh, and I've never even met the fucker. He has people sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, for $1 million to make sure that no one discusses his shows on any platform. So I didn't sign this NDA. I haven't seen his shows, and I'm going to say, you suck. Pete Davidson, who the f- like? who the fuck is he that he can make people sign a $1 million NDA for his stupid show? I don't know. So you can't talk about it on your social platforms? Like, fuck off. <coughs> I mean, if people don't sign it, they tell you don't have to do it. They don't get to go. They get their money back and then that's it, right? What do you mean don't get to go where? They don't get to go to a show if they don't sign that agreement. Ooh. So you have to sign this agreement yeah, to be able to act, to get access. Otherwise, you they give you back your money, which is fine, yeah. and then you go. What I really hope happens to Pete Davidson is that nobody goes because no one signs this fucking agreement. Mm-hmm. Because he's not even funny, and real comedians don't do that. Well, see, the real comedians just know how to deal with it. It's basically like, okay, you can't... Like, let them... People get talk all day, but they can't record anything. So at the end of the day, it's hearsay. Like, it's... You can't really... It's not even the hearsay part. He doesn't even want his jokes or anything, or the show itself, or anything being discussed on people's social platforms. And again, show meaning his comedy, comedy shows. Show, yeah. Okay. Which, so it's like Kevin Hart, one of them. One of the biggest com- comedy guys in the past couple of years. I went to his show, and it was his new, brand new show, um, the What Now Tour. Mm-hmm. And all they said is that if we see anyone with their phones out, you're out. That's fine. That's it. You're That's kicked fair. out. You yeah. don't get your money back. Get the hell out of here. That's fair. So no NDA required. Even a big time comedian, comedian like Kevin Hart, doesn't this, deals with it in the in the best way when you have who Pete Davidson is kind of nobody other than his SNL skits, but even then it's whatever. He's a fucking he's a, child. Yeah. And he's not funny. That's the worst part. If he was funny, yeah. even then I wouldn't get I it. I haven't but heard I, his stuff. If I really Dave don't. Chappelle decided to do that tomorrow, I'd be like, you know what? He's fucking earned it. He yeah. can do whatever he wants. And people will go see yeah. it, sign it, I'll fuck if he came here. Yeah. I would go and see it. Fucking sign the NDA. Don't talk about it. But here's it the thing: anything. he probably does the same thing like every other comedian says. No phones. That's no, it. No, no, but that's fine. But to yeah. make people sign a one million dollar non disclosure yeah, yeah. is just. It's Asinine. like you're not that funny. Yeah. At all. But anyways, it seems like every single time I see his fucking face, I just want to punch it. Fuck Pete Davidson. And then, last but not least, to end on a real cute note, Baby Groot. Or Baby Yoda. I've been asking people. So far, Yoda's really pulling through. Yeah, it's Baby Yoda. You're you're picking Baby Yoda over Baby Groot? It's meant to be Baby Yoda because he's a Yoda-esque species. That's it. No, 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 no. Oh, like as a comparison. Which For one you like one better? One versus the other. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. even know what you were, where you were planning you're on. No, it's Baby Groot or Baby Yoda who is the better one. Mm, I don't know. We saw more out of Baby Groot. That's why I'm like, wow, you guys are quick. He like uses the force once. Yeah. Sits there with a cup of soup or yeah. tea. And you have baby Groot yeah. who's fighting fuckers. Mm-hmm. Like, again, Yoda did the force thing. But baby Groot chased these fools down and was whipping them around in Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy too. I mm-hmm. mean. You definitely I, got more out of them. So if you'd like, definitely, uh, I'm, I'd be leaning more to baby Groot, let's say. I think the only thing against the baby Groot argument is that he turns into teen Groot who's an asshole but that's not the argument no I know but I'm saying like baby. we know that baby Yoda who knows and what's gonna happen with baby, baby Yoda. looking Yoda who's 50 years old so yeah that's another thing it's technically not because baby Groot is actually like a child like a yeah. baby in terms of age I think unless unless it's like a Yoda dog years thing unless you take one of his twigs cut it in half and see how many rings are yeah, maybe. there to judge how many maybe rings. maybe okay let's get out of here sure we are done we don't have anything else, unless you had anything else. No. Did you mention anything? I don't think so. No such thing. Oh, the Mulan trailer came out. Did you see it? I did see the trailer. Did you like it? It looks really good, actually. 
I haven't seen it yet. A lot of people are excited for it. They're they really have high hopes for it, and I hopefully it uh, does it justice. Not like the Lion King, which is the last one. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, we'll always be plagued by that a bit. But like we said, we still have the original, which doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. But anyways, thank you so much for joining our episode, which mm-hmm. was pretty much us throwing reviews up all over you. Um, and I hope you go and see the stuff that we were watching. I mean, obviously the uh, the what's it called? The Irishman's on Netflix, and we spoiled that one for the most part. Yep. Um, but Knives Out, we didn't spoil. No. The Ferrari, we didn't spoil. So go take a look at those. Crown, we didn't spoil. Mm-hmm. Mandalorian, we did. But again, it's out. And by the time you listen to this, you pr- and if you do care, you probably would have already seen it already um that's it thank you once again for being with us for another week i don't know what's gonna happen next week if we're gonna record a regular time or i'm gonna switch i'm gonna see what's gonna happen with work Roll the dice see what happens it's all about work okay just 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 okay uh that's it thank you so much for everybody for listening from wherever you're listening from to on whatever i always appreciate it you can find me on Twitter at the F4G. You can uh, email us at the F4Podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following the F4 Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, I think that's it. That's all. Thanks so much. I'm G. I'm Vass. And we're out. <laughs>